maybe like two, three years back, you can only hear about this in the northwest, northeast, and uh, the, you know. But now it's coming down to the southwest, and it's telling us that uh, this is the reality, and uh, we need to take a very serious approach to it, because uh, many lives have been lost in the past few years, and uh, it's not stopping, it's still continuing, you know. And uh, it might just be like what we're saying about COVID-19. That might not be something that will just go away. It's something that we have to develop a serious approach to so that everybody can live peacefully. The, the economic situation in the country is very bad. It's very bad now. And uh, you know, the end result of such is criminal behavior. You know. So government have to do a lot of things to improve the economic situation of the country to provide basic infrastructures that can, I mean, that the security agency can leverage on. Look at what happened recently in SARS. That has affected the psyche of police everywhere. You know, are they putting enough like before? Do they want to even risk their life like before? So that, those are the questions we need to ask ourselves. And if you don't want to deceive ourselves, all these factors are very important and it's affecting the security situation of the country. I must say that there's a lot of pressure on the private security practitioners because uh, especially when the police are off the street, people engage us more. And some of the things that even most private companies are not prepared for, you have to do it. You have to guard some facilities that probably before you are being backed up by police, only you will be left alone there. So if I look at there's a lot of pressure on private security industry now, which of course we are coping with, despite the, uh, we don't really have much to leverage on, like uh, having the inf infrastructure by the government to leverage on, but uh, we are trying to cope with the little resources at our disposal. But there's a lot of pressure on us right now. People want to engage us more. Like I said that we had um, uh, a, 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 a program in Calabar late last year, and the uh, Honorable Minister of Interior was there. Uh, Inspector General of Police too was equally there. And some other dignitaries, you know, uh, in the seat of power. And this is one of the uh, suggestions, one of the things we recommended to them, that we, they should not see us as from the, as, from the angle of making money, you know, because both the government, the public perception generally is that we are in business to make money for profit making. But everybody forgotten that uh, we are also complementing the effort of the uh, government law enforcement agencies. And the way that we are doing that, we are just doing it at our own risk. So we made suggestion to the Honorable Minister of Interior, and they said they are going to look into it. And uh, our industry too, we are still going to try all our best to advocate and see that, uh, I mean, speak with the government and who that matters in the industry, to know that uh, this thing is important to us. Because if we are guiding the facility with that harms, I mean, there, there, there will be little to what we can do. We are doing a lot of things, actually, in our state. And uh, if you look at what happened in the state lately now, the security threat is high and everybody, you know, is a concern to everyone. So one of the things we, uh, we have done just uh, last month, we organized a stakeholders uh, forum, whereby we invited the public, we invited the uh, civil defense and some other law enforcement uh, officers, and uh, we had a round table discussion on the problems we have at hand, the best way to go about them, and uh, how to foster the future occurrences. The, what uh, we have been preaching to people lately is that people should get involved. You know, previously, everybody believed that uh, security is not their business. It's government's business. But now, it's a different ballgame. So everybody should get involved. Then everybody should pay attention to details. For instance, now, maybe in the past few years, Something is ha happening within your neighborhood, you don't care, but not, no more in this present situation we have at hand now. 
So everything is, that is happening in your neighborhood, you must pay attention to it. You see some foreigners, you see some strangers, you see some things happening, you must ask questions. And if you are not satisfied, you get in, uh, across to the law enforcement officers. You let them know what is happening within your neighborhood. Security situation in the states might not be the best we want, but at the same time, if the governor is not doing anything, then it will have been worse than this. I know to a reasonable extent that our governor is giving it his best, but at the same time, that best might look, you know, in the public that as if it's not enough. But I'm, I'm telling you that he's really doing his best to make sure that your state is safe and free from all kind of danger and anxiety. But when you look at the trends of what is happening, you know that it's not that it just started yesterday. It's something that has been, you know, on ground for a very long time. And I must say that the governor is trying to be on top of his game to make sure that the state is free from all sorts of uh, insecurity.